Pretty girls walk like this, 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 this. Pretty girls walk like this, 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 this. All the pretty girls walk like big boss vet. Pull up in the vet, flood out my wrist with some ice around my neck. Shitting on my ex, on to the next. How close can we as a nation come to achieving pure, perfect capitalism, which is no taxation, perfectly privatized um, industries, you know? Because what we do is we look at the left and say, hey, socialism, communism, how far left can we go? Well, let's look at how far right we can go, at least as the United States. The story you tell, the one without taxes, the one with perfect competition, that's what we teach in economics courses. It's a utopian dream of what might be a capitalism, and we teach it to students so they understand how far from it every actual capitalism in the history of the last 300 years has been. It's a, it's a model, it's an image. Nobody in their right mind, at least not in anything I've ever encountered, imagines it as even possible. It's an image, it's a desire. Then you measure how far from it you've gotten. But the reality is capitalism's competition, for example, when one company works against another, one of them wins, and then the other one goes out of business, and then what's left of the other one is bought by the one who wins. And pretty soon, competition makes only a few companies. We know that because we live in it. So competition produces its own negation, monopoly, which then becomes a big problem, so we call in the government. But the notion of the government as somehow sitting there, rather than itself being a product of the capitalist system is a bizarre way of imagining the government having no causes and no shapers of what it is. Modern feminism is ruining women. They don't want families. They don't want... Listen to me. Listen to me. I will never be able to afford a house. I will never be able to afford a house. I am about to lose my health insurance because I make too much money now. The 40-hour work week was structured around the assumption that you would have somebody at home doing your domesticated labor for free. Cooking, cleaning, childcare. Even despite currently living in an economy that requires a two-income household just to be comfortable. The upper class all organize to prevent affordable housing from being built in the first place. The only war that there is is a class war. You are not frustrated with feminism or women. You are frustrated with late-stage capitalism. Happy Black History Month. Right, you aren't excited? Why should I care? What do you mean, it's our history? Yes, and it's the shortest month in the year, so hurry it up, I see. You're, you're one of those. And more importantly, what makes it happy? Black joy is a radical act of resistance against an oppressor who wants nothing more than to see us dead, silent. It, it, it was illegal for black people to laugh in the Jim Crow South. Good, good, then laugh. But maybe it's just another trick of a racist capitalistic system that would rather see us dancing and laughing than organizing to overthrow our masters. You seem angry and you don't. I just don't think it's fair to rob black people of their right to celebration after everything we've been through. And I don't think it's right to pacify liberation movements with symbolic gestures that amount to no real change. No real change? That's extreme. Perhaps. But so was the death of Tyree Nichols, and George Floyd, and Breonna Taylor, and Freddie Gray, and I get it. The police killed more people in 2022 than any other year in recorded history. Disproportionately black. Of course they did. Right. Let me let you in on a little secret. It's easier to just pretend. So. Let's do some cooking. One of the first things this Republican Congress did was remove Ilhan Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee, and Democrats haven't defended her because she's the bravest person in Congress. Why is she the bravest person in Congress? Because she's a refugee from war, she's black, she's a woman, she's Muslim, and she's a socialist. You might remember that Marjorie Taylor Greene said white supremacist stuff and helped target Ilhan Omar, and that's why she was removed from committees, so Republicans wanted revenge. 
While it's clear why the Republicans target Ilhan Omar, their excuse for taking her off of the Foreign Affairs Committee is because they say that she said something anti-Semitic in the past. What's the crazy thing she said? That Israel's lobby has power over Congress, which is objectively true. And the Democrats have been proving her right by defending her, but still bringing up the fact that they also think she said anti-Semitic things in the past, which she did not. Hopefully Ilhan Omar will be back on the committee soon so she can continue to speak truth to the power. Yummy. One of the things I will never forget is this one time in college I saw this girl wearing an ASL shirt and I always come up to people if I think they might know sign or be deaf or hard of hearing. So I'm walking up to this girl and I start sim coming because she's speaking with her friend and I say, are you in ASL class? And she was like, no, I'm not. And I said, oh, you're in ASL club. I've never seen you before. And she said, um, no. But she looked confused, so I started to explain, like, oh, you have an ASL shirt on, you know, like ASL, like American Sign Language. There's finger spelling on the shirt. So you know ASL, right? And she was like, oh, I don't know what ASL is. I just have this shirt because it looks cool. My question is, do y'all get shirts with different languages on it and not know what language it is or what it means? Because if I got a shirt with a different language on it, I would want to know. You, you've just said that when you consent to sex, you are acknowledging the possibility of becoming pregnant mm -hmm. and consenting to that. Mm -hmm. If it's consent to the possibility of pregnancy, then it is consent to pregnancy. No, it's not, but I do consent to running laps around Daily Wire dumb fucks until Candace Owens responds to me, so here we go. I think this clip and people like Michael Knowles are a direct product of when we let intuition supersede critical thinking. And it's funny because these people are so dog shit at making arguments that he literally almost disproves his own line of thinking while he's talking. Watch. If I consent to go to the bar, and I know that if I go to the bar, there's a possibility that I get drunk. I am consenting to that hangover that I am going to have, that will involve some suffering and maybe mm -hmm. teach me some lessons. Right there, it's very hard to catch and he did it very quickly, but pay attention. He says, if I go to the bar and I know there's a possibility I could get drunk, that means I'm consenting to the hangover that follows. But one thing, you just completely skipped over the getting drunk part. Going to a bar does not by default mean that you consent to being drunk. The simple fact that bars offer things other than alcohol for you to be able to consume, which we'll get back to why that matters, means that while getting drunk is a foreseeable possibility of going to a bar, that does not mean that you must consent to being drunk the millisecond you step into a bar. In fact, oftentimes when people go out to drink at a bar, they'll carry a friend with them to stay sober so that they can drive everybody home. But if somebody were to run up to that person and stuff a bunch of tequila down their throat, we wouldn't say, up, oh, you consented to this happening when you came to the bar. And the reason why I think people like him get away with saying stupid shit like this is because the word consent is being woefully misused. Let's take a look at the definition of consent. Permission for something to happen or an agreement to do something. Now, I don't know how successful Michael Knowles is with the ladies, but uh, newsflash, if a woman gives you permission to have sex with them, you are not then permitted by default to give them a child. If you go to the bar, people are not necessarily just permitted to give you alcohol. If you're driving, people aren't permitted to just run into your car because you've consented to the act of driving. One of my main issues with this dumbass line of thinking is that this logic does not hold up in any other context because accepting the risk that something may happen is a completely different concept than giving permission for that thing to happen when you drive you accept the risk that someone may be a drunk driver you accept the risk that someone may run into you you accept the risk that your car may spontaneously combust but if any of those things are to happen to you you wouldn't be expected to be okay with that nor did you give the okay for those things to happen and before you say well the main purpose of driving is just transportation the main purpose of sex is to have a kid Nope, way ahead of you there, buddy. Now you can believe that the main purpose of sex should be to have a kid all you want. But the fact remains that while historically we've assumed that the reasons why people have sex are few in number, sex is a multifaceted, multi-layered human psychological phenomenon that has a myriad of reasons why people would want to do it. And before you say it's not only a foreseeable outcome, it's a very foreseeable outcome. Well, then I have to question you because isn't that completely dependent on the circumstances? Because remember when I told you bars offer more than just alcohol? Well, there are multiple ways to have sex, some of which in which there's a 0% possibility that anyone will get pregnant. There are people who are having sex trying to become pregnant and still can't, if things like birth control and condoms are being used, I think a reasonable person can assume that there's a very low likelihood of anyone becoming pregnant. Well, okay, so if you're somebody who can become pregnant, you know you can, and no condoms or contraceptives are being used, then you consent to pregnancy. And even then, still no! Not only would your original claim need to be walked back so far to only have a shred of making sense, as long as one or both parties involved do not want a pregnancy, that action is not being consented to. Much in the same way I could drive at high speeds in bad weather with no seatbelt on, 
I still don't consent to dying in a car accident or being badly injured or having a car accident in general. Now there is room for one to say, well, you shouldn't have been doing that or whatever. You need to be safe or da da da. That's a perfectly fine conversation. But if I take the most reckless elements of what you can do while driving and say the act of driving means you're consenting to a car accident, I'd look like a damn idiot. But somehow we let these dudes get paid millions of dollars and get away with it anyway with viral clips. Because as long as it sounds intuitively correct, we shut our brains off and go, ha ha ha, look at the dumb woman over there. Or at least y'all do that. I don't, I don't be doing that because I'm not a damn idiot. But so not only is this line of argumentation dangerous, it's just one of their justifications that they can use every time they want to condemn somebody for having an abortion or an unwanted pregnancy. And this is exactly why I'll continue to make you guys look like idiots because if you consent to saying dumb shit on the internet, I consent to ether in your shit. shit. Men who refer to women as females. That's gross and weird. You are a female though. When we talk about the word female, what we don't talk about often enough is how it connects to our identity of sex versus gender. And the best way to start this conversation and talk about why female is truly problematic is to look at black women's history. Because black women's integration into Western American society is one of the first points in history where we marked a difference between sex and gender. Black women were integrated into American society through slavery. And back then, when slavery started, it was only African men who were being enslaved because the patriarchy of the time said women couldn't do hard labor. But over the years, as the demand for slave labor boomed, but the population of African men dwindled, white enslavers came up with this clever philosophical workaround to justify enslaving African women without uprooting the patriarchy or starting a gender revolution with white women. And that solution was to separate what it meant to be female versus a woman. Woman is a noun, a person with female biology. But when you strip away personhood, all you're left with is female, an adjective, which is a description, not an identity. And calling black women females, but not women, was crucial for a few reasons. By being females, it meant that black women had female biology, which not only meant they could be sexually exploited by white enslavers, but it also meant they could procreate a new generation of enslaved people, which was much more economically sustainable than enslaving and transporting people from Africa. It was also key in getting white women to accept proximity to black women, because not only could black women's biology be used to rear and raise the children of white women, but because they were never considered women, they could exploit black women by being female while never feeling like their social status as white women were going to be threatened. And like so many things from the slavery period, it's cascaded through history. And a poignant example is the way that it impacted gynecology, which is relevant to every woman and person with female biology. J. Marion Sims is considered to be the father of gynecology because he developed so many medical practices and tools that are still used today. But it's not because he was some incredible genius. It's because he had black women to exploit as medical guinea pigs. See, J. Marion Sims felt justified in exploiting black women's bodies because he saw black women as being female, as being the perfect specimens to develop a practice for female biology around. But because he didn't recognize the womanhood, the personhood of black women, he was able to exploit them without ever considering their sense of agency, their bodily autonomy, or their consent. I would argue that the reason that gynecology seems like this torturous medieval practice to this day is because the man who developed those practices was doing it on women that he thought didn't feel any pain or didn't even care that they did. Know the history behind the words you choose to use. Woods cooking. If you're not a socialist, I don't think you should be allowed to be mad at Netflix for no longer allowing password sharing. This is capitalism, baby. We gotta make profits year over year and Netflix has not been doing a good job recently. And what did you expect? For the CEO to spend some of his billions of dollars to keep Netflix afloat? What, you thought they were gonna make better content to get their numbers up? No, they're gonna pass the cost on to you because they know that most of you won't leave because you have the shows you like. That's the system you support. And by the way, those shows that are really good that Netflix cancels after a season, sorry, they didn't make enough money even though they were really good. And even though this is a small example of how capitalism destroys art, you can always watch Hulu or some other stuff. But it's not just Netflix that's passing on costs to customers, it's also every other company. It's health insurance companies too, the ones that decide whether you get to live or die. It's the Federal Reserve trying to make unemployment go up and wages go down to save corporations money. Pizza! 
Modern day policing in America started as slave patrols, groups of people whose sole mission was to catch and return runaway enslaved people and prevent slave uprisings through terrorism and torture. After the Civil War, slave patrols were no longer necessary, so they morphed into militia groups. Their new mission was to deny formerly enslaved people their equal rights. They would restrict black people's access to rightfully earned wages, stop them from voting, and otherwise enforce the black codes, a set of laws explicitly intended to limit black people's freedoms and force them back into slavery indentured servitude. When the Black Codes were abolished with the 14th Amendment, a new set of rules took their place, the Jim Crow laws, which cities formed modern-day police departments to enforce through excessive brutality. Jim Crow laws legally enforced racial segregation, and with the help of the police, those laws stayed in place for nearly a century, only being abolished in 1964, less than 60 years ago. Today, this country has the world's largest prison population and highest per capita incarceration rate, and unsurprisingly, black people continue to be the primary target of this discriminatory and unjust system. Because the foundation of our policing system was a group of people who existed solely to keep black people enslaved. Perhaps it is time for a more humane system. Talk about the internalized racism and how lighter skinned voices, they don't get heard, they don't get pushed out there. I remember this dude. This dude, like two years ago, I made a video about how free Britney is a disability issue and like what she's going through is like very disability based. And they said that if more people understood disability law, they'd be better equipped to advocate for free Britney. This dude told me, <laughs> he goes, It's not a disability issue, she's not actually disabled, and it's insulting for you to call her disabled. Disabled people need to get their own thing and they need to stop riding the coattails of this issue. It's not a disability issue. Maybe he just likes being loud and wrong about everything. <laughs> Let's talk about how Pablo Picasso stole African art. So although Picasso denied being influenced by African art, he got his inspiration for Cubism after viewing traditional sculptures of the Maconde people of North Tanzania. In fact, he often readapted the works of anonymous African artists. Now granted, whether it was cultural theft or inspiration is debatable, but I personally believe that influence without credit is theft. You see, in the early 1900s, Pablo Picasso said l'art nègre connaît pas, but he was actually an avid collector of African art. Perhaps he denied its existence due to political or patriotic reasons, but regardless, it still meant that African art was not given the credit it deserved. And what's crazier is that there was actually a period of time in his career where he straight up painted African artifacts. Two of the ladies in Les Demoiselles d'Avignon were inspired by masks of the Dan tribe in Ivory Coast, and Nude with Raised Arms was influenced by a figure from the Kotsa or Bakotsa culture in northeastern Gabon. In fact, the Makonde had been carving geometric sculptures of intertwined bodies and faces for hundreds of years. Yet it was Picasso and Braque, two European artists who were credited with inventing cubism and 20th century abstract art. African artists received little to no recognition for doing the same kind of work inspired by their own culture. Ironically and perhaps maddeningly, Picasso was seen as a boundary pushing artist when in Africa artists had been pushing those boundaries. I will say this though, there is small comfort in knowing that although Picasso was and is hailed as a genius, the source of his innovation came from the home of what they called the savages. Shit like this brings the movement down. Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around.